In this video, we'll be looking at life cycle assessments. By the end of this topic, you should be able to identify the four main stages in a life cycle assessment. You should be able to compare the life cycle assessments for shopping bags made of different materials and also evaluate the problems associated with life cycle assessments. A life cycle assessment is a technique to assess environmental impacts associated with all the stages of a product's life. For example, with this microwave below. Now, a life cycle assessment, it's basically an analysis of the impact of a manufactured product on their environment. There are many stages involved in a life cycle assessment, but our focus is only on the four main stages. The first stage involves getting and processing the raw materials. All the raw materials we need come from the Earth's crust, atmosphere or oceans, or are due to living organisms. Obtaining these materials has an impact on the environment, including using up limited resources such as ores and crude oil and damaging habitats through quarrying, mining or felling trees. Our second stage involves making the product and packaging it. Well, this is manufacture. The manufacture of products has an impact on the environment, including using up land for factories and the use of machines and people. Our third stage is using, reusing, and maintaining the product. The impact of a product on the environment due to its use depend, depends on the type of product. For example, a wooden chair has very little impact unless it needs cleaning or repair. On the other hand, something like a car uses um, a lot of fuel and will have significant impact on the environment. Now, this microwave will fall somewhere between those two examples. And finally, we have disposal. Disposing of the product at the end of its life. The disposal of all products has an impact on the environment, including using up land for landfill sites. And whether or um, any at all, the product can be recycled or reused. Now, I want you to consider this. All the stages of a life cycle assessment is likely to include information about the use of energy, the transport of materials, and the release of waste substances in the environment. Let's now consider the inputs and the outputs of a LCA. Pause the video, draw this diagram down, and as we're going through, I want you to fill in the blue boxes. Now, the input includes which raw materials are being used and how much energy is used. This will depend on the type of product being used. Now, one output that must be considered is atmospheric emissions. For example, carbon dioxide emissions. The more CO2, the greater the impact on the earth as this is a greenhouse gas. Another output are waterborne wastes, where waste materials enter into the oceans, rivers, lakes, etc. Another output includes solid, solid waste. These include waste entering landfill sites and nature in general. And finally, um, we have co-products. This could include any chemical waste being produced from the manufacture of the product. We can also consider the dissipation of energy into the surroundings. One thing that I want you to note is that the higher the inputs and outputs at each stage of the life cycle assessment of a product, the higher the environmental impact of that product. How do we interpret the life cycle assessment of a product? Now, here's an exam type question that I want you to consider. The table shows some data about the energy needed in the lifetime of a pillowcase. You have the raw materials, the lifetime energy use is 10%, manufacture is 15%, use is 70% and disposal 5%. Pause the video and try this question. It says, discuss the use of energy during the lifetime of the product um, the pillowcase describe one way in which the energy used could be significantly reduced. 
Well, when you look at the data, one quarter of the energy used is associated with making the pillowcase and very little is used in disposing it. Another thing to note is that the greatest amount of energy happens when the pillowcase is being used. Probably this is due to washing, drying and ironing the pillowcase. And finally, energy use could be reduced by drying it outside without ironing and washing it at a lower temperature. Another thing that you should be able to do is a comparison between different LCAs. This is known as comparative LCAs and it can be used to evaluate which of two alternative products will have a lower negative impact on the environment. For example, we can carry out a comparison between plastic carrier bags and paper carrier bags. Paper or plastic bags, which will have a lower negative impact on the environment. I want you to pause the video and carry out a life cycle assessment for a supermarket that is deciding whether to use polyethylene bags or paper bags. First of all, you need to list all the inputs and outputs. This include raw materials, energy and environmental impacts. Then give all of the environmental impacts a rating between one to 10, with 10 having the greatest impact. Next, what else do you need to take into consideration before making a final decision on which bag to use? What about the amount of energy being dissipated? Finally, based on your evaluation and your ratings, justify your choice from a purely environmental point of view, which is best, which will have a lower negative impact on the environment. Okay, you can pause the video and check to see if you noted any of these points. Now, again, when you're doing your comparison, you need to consider the four main stages of the life cycle assessment. And then for each stage, um, make a note of the, the possible impact. For example, with plastic carry bags, crude oil is required. It's a finite resource and you need to do fractional distillation, cracking and polymerization. And all of these processes requires a lot of energy. With the paper carrier bags, it can be made from recycled paper or from trees. And making paper from trees requires more energy than recycling paper, but much less energy than making plastics. If you look at the manufacturer, it's cheaper to make a large quantity of bags from plastic and it's more expensive to make bags from paper because the handles must be glued on. Glue is expensive. With the use, the plastic carry bags has a lower impact on the environment because plastic bags are usually stronger. They can be reused many times. While the paper carry bags, the lifetime is relatively short. It can only be um, reused a limited number of times. Finally, with disposal, um, with plastic carrier bags, we have some issues. Um, plastics can sometimes be collected and recycled, positive. However, if disposed as litter, they do not biodegrade. And in landfills, this may take up to decades or centuries to, to degrade. With paper bags, it can be recycled easily. If disposed in a landfill, they can biodegrade very, very quickly. There are criticisms to life cycle assessments. They are debatable. The environmental impact can be converted to an impact score. However, allocating numerical values to pollutant effects is less of a straightforward process. It requires value judgments. It is sometimes easy to work out accurate numerical values for parts of a LCA. However, some parts require judgments. For example, we can measure the amount of energy needed to manufacture a product or the amount of carbon dioxide produced by transporting raw materials. However, some parts of the life cycle assessment requires judgment, such as the effect of pollutants. Completing a life cycle assessment is therefore not a totally objective process, as different people might come up with different judgments. 
it is important to consider who has completed the life cycle assessment and whether they have any bias. For example, if a life cycle assessment is completed by a company which is making and selling a product and they're advertising, they might only include some parts of the genuine environmental impact.